thanks, Stephen. I don't know if, do we introduce ourselves or do we just go? It is your choice, my dear friend. Okay, well, I'll just say hi uh, briefly. I'm an architect. I teach at the architecture school here in Kingston. Um, I know Stephen vaguely because I also have a side project of uh, interviews. It's a podcast called Scaffold, and it's mainly interviews with architects and designers, but occasionally other figures kind of creep into the fray. And um, I'm excited to be here. I asked Stephen if I could join uh, because I don't write, but I would like to. And I feel like there's nothing like the uh, the threat of um, being publicly humiliated <laughs> to, to galvanize um, productivity. So I may still be humiliated, but at least I've tried to do something as well. Um, so just a bit of context. Uh, the unit I teach at Kingston is about facades. Um, and I was trying to find a way into thinking about death remembrance and architecture. And that way in seemed to have something to do with weathering. Um, so that, that's the kind of prelude, I guess, just to give you a bit of, uh, a bit of context. Um, okay, so consider the varied forms through which the dead are remembered. Headstone, pillar tomb, mortuary house, sarcophagus, recumbent effigy, rock cut tomb, stone ship, the proverbial mound in the woods, each enclosing in its own way a human body. These houses for the dead endure, solid, heavy, anchored to the earth, as if a part of geologic time. Much like the houses for the living, they are of a world that both precedes and outlasts us, the backdrop to our finite sojourn. And yet, we also see the finitude of things, the sojourn of objects in various states, imperfect and decadent as they are. Every physical thing, an architect once said, carries within its deepest layers a tendency towards its own destruction. And this return of matter to its source reminds us of nature's rightful claim, that is, the natural justice of erosion and decay. It is here, in the process of weathering, that we find a faint but certain memory of death. Concerned less with the form than with the surface of things, the weathered facade, aged by the elements to which it slowly returns, becomes a building's own death mask. But this way of putting it seems all too human. The same architect has said that, in the process of subtracting the finish of a surface, weathering adds the finish of the environment. Here then, lies the hinge that swings us toward a memory of death within the more than human realm. Looking closely at surfaces, we see the stains of accumulated dirt, the paths and stillness of water, the miniature forests of lichen and moss, the faults caused by freezing and thawing, the efflorescent bloom of salt, these blandly alien phenomena that occur beyond the realms of anthropology. And so it is here, from this place beyond our bodies, where we sense most acutely our, materi our material selves. There is solace to be found in our composite nature. Like so many atoms, we dither and swerve and fall apart the agents and products of a weathering world. That's amazing.